Hong, you're here. I'm so glad you're with me today. Thank you for joining Essential Stories. How are you? Hi, Terry. Hi, everyone. I'm great. I'm fabulous. And thank you for clicking in to hear about my essential oil stories. It's it's a long story. And we, unfortunately, I wish we had three hours to go through all of it. But you will just have to take some time to connect with Hong. We're going to give you all the links that you need to get to know him better and where to continue a conversation with him and how to get to know him. This is just going to be like a little glimpse into who you are and what you've done. And, you know, the pages of YouTube couldn't certainly hold all that information. But just to make it fun, we're going to play a little game. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Yes, it's too. called This or That. You have to pick one. This or that, eat an undercooked meal, so something raw or a burnt meal. A what meal? Burnt. But you know, like oh, burnt. Over overcooked. Burnt. Oh. Yeah, overcooked. Would you rather have your food undercooked and a little bit raw or burnt and overcooked? Okay, can I give the answer now? Yeah. Undercooked. Undercooked, okay. <laughs> Would you, let's see, you're already, let's see. Would you rather give up <laughs> brushing your teeth or washing your feet? Feet, washing the feet, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't give up washing my teeth. I probably brush that three or four times a day. Okay. Would you rather be able to master every musical instrument or play every sport wow music versus sports well i listen to music so i can't give my answer to that sports the only sport i, I surprisingly play is hoops that's yeah that's right and and make, you play it really i make a well. deal with nick to say you know next time you know when the timing is right we will go watch a hoops game yeah so okay. no and no definite answer to that okay <laughs> Would you rather be known for your your um, intelligence and your knowledge or your sense of humor? Well, that's a difficult one. I think if I have to choose, let me choose humor because these days, you know, knowledge in, is can you can simply ask Mr. Google. Mr. Google can give you all <laughs> the answers these days. Or even chat GPT too. There we yep. go. I know it's getting even more expensive, right? <gasps> yep. Oh my gosh. All right. What annoys you more? Someone with bad breath or bad manners? Bad manners. Bad manners. Yeah, bad breath. We can just put on a mask and then put some easy or easy air or brief essential oil on it. <laughs> and we are good. And give them an on guard drop or something. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Would you rather never age physically or mentally? Mentally. Mentally. Okay. Really, really good. And and you you've done a lot of work with other modalities and the brain and the body and so so many things. I'm not going to jump ahead. Let's start at the beginning. Tell All right. me what your first memory of an essential oil is that you can remember. What were you a child? Were you older? Like the first time you encountered an essential oil? Okay, so probably it's in the late 1990s, so probably 1998, when I traveled over to UK. So it was for a corporate job. And then over the weekend, I'm actually a tourist, and we went to Norwich. And then it was the lavender fields of Norwich. And so, you know, after touring the lavender fields, they also have the gift shop and one bot small bottle of lavender essential oil. They say, oh, interesting to help with stress, to help with sleep. Interesting. Okay. All right. So that's my first introduction to essential oils, 1998 in uh, UK. In the UK. So hmm. did you do anything with it after that? Or you just said, well, that's nice. And you kind of moved on with your life. Yeah, I think that was, that was nice. You know, uh, it was only until I went to Melbourne, Australia, and it was at Queen Victoria Market and they had like, bottles and bottles of aromatherapy that I really, really started into the habit. Before that, you know, UK was probably the first time it brought up into the face for me. Okay, so so now what oil experience got you excited about, you know, actually using them and starting to put them in your lifestyle? 
I, I would have to say lavender and wild orange. I mean, for me, I'm more a supplement person. So I've always been on the lifelong vitality. And even the when you know when I put on a bit of weight post-pandemic uh, due to revenge eating. Uh yeah, so Metal Power was launched and I tested it out and wow, it worked wonders. You know, got the photos to show you all later. However, in terms of oils, it is really peppermint and wild orange, which somehow hits that sweet spot for me. Peppermint, you know, because it is refreshing and wild orange is just so distressing. So that that is the perfect combo. And then from there, did your curiosity get like, like, how did you decide, okay, this smells really, really good. But not like your experience in Norway, where you just said, oh, that's nice. And you moved on. Like, what made it stick in your lifestyle? Yeah, I think that was in USA. I think I was uh, visiting doTERRA office, you know, checking them out. And Justin Harrison, you know, he was the one. I think we went over to his uh, office and he just let me try the home. That's all you need to do. Just let people try this peppermint and wild orange and teach the 10 oils for the rest of your life and you're set for life. I said, is that all, all that needs to be done? Yeah. And so the experience with peppermint and wild orange is such where, yeah, I can't really put a word to it, but I have to say it is magical and it somehow reaches the depth of your heart. You know, mm. somehow it touches you emotionally and at the same time, it awakens your mind. So this beautiful combination somehow just stick for me. And yeah, and then, you know, the rest is history. You know, we choose to enroll in doTERRA. And that was in 2013 June. And that was even before we enrolled in doTERRA. We enrolled in doTERRA on August 2013. So, but in June, we had an opportunity to visit uh, Utah. And yes, Carrie, you were there, remember? With yeah. Irina, and we did and, quite a few I, of the mummy you, famous u turns. Yeah, you <laughs> had um you had a pretty interesting experience. Was it with oregano or thyme? Uh oregano. So oregano. I was in the office and then so you, you were know, you were very curious about oregano. Do you want to talk about why oregano specifically and what you Okay, did? so in my understanding and even in the Asian culture, we actually take oregano leaves and then boil in water and use that water to drink as a uh, an aid for you know uh, getting better, whether is it respiratory challenges or immunity challenges. Okay. So in our culture, uh, oregano is something that is known. So however, um you know, it, a lot of times, oregano, due to its high in phenols, it is actually very caustic to our GI tract, all right? And sometimes it smells quite strong and, uh, sorry to say, a bit offensive. Other uh, other labels of oregano smells a bit offensive. However, you know, uh, that, that, that time I remember, I was at David Sterling's office. And then there was like a whole gamut of oils. And then I just took one bottle of oregano, open it, I sniff it, I drink one drop. And then I say, hmm, that was okay. And then um, Dave Sterling looked at me in horror, you know, because yeah. he was expecting me to, you know, be screaming about how spicy it is or whatever. Right. Then he said, that guy didn't bat an eyelid. He was like, the coolest cucumber ever. So that did, that gave him a, such a strong impression. I think he remembered me because of the oregano. Absolutely. We all do. I think that <laughs> moment will be literally burned in my brain forever because I was so impressed. You know, I, I, I you're very brave to do that, number one. And, and the fact that the oil, you know, that you... You liked it, right? You came away feeling confident about the company and and uh, excited excited about the product. So, do you still share oregano and lavender with people, or do you have other oils that you put in combination now to introduce? You know that first experience for someone. Hmm. I think for my first experience, I like to look into solutions that people are after. Okay. So typically, what are people looking for? Something to awaken their mind, something to support their emotions. So with beyond a doubt, peppermint wild orange, that's a, that's a go-to combo. Then if it's sports related or aches and pain related, the Urak, you know? Okay. And 
sometimes you know uh, people may not be so passionate about health and wellness but when you talk about looking forever young you know uh-huh uh -huh, then um uh, not sure if it is uh, i got my filters on okay because you can't you can't but let me sh uh, pull out my screen that i normally share with people so yeah, let me get organized so what happened is you know because we attended classes and then they said that well do you know that there's one oil that can help to minimize shrinkers? I say, get real. Yeah, right. <laughs> so then I say, okay, let's put it to the test. And so I put it to the test and voila. So I it took over two weeks. So by week two, wow. you know, you could see that I applied the essential oils only on one part of my face. You can see that, you know, just the four, you can see three lines over here. Yeah. Uh, however, you know, this part here doesn't seem, seems to be quite clear. Then extending for, further into week four, uh, let's compare this side here yeah. versus the lines here. Okay, so this was way back, you know, and within two weeks, four weeks, you know, I got some very definite results. And so I like to say that if you are interested in terms of, say, minimizing the the age lines on your face wow. well frankincense essential oil and wow. don't take my picture for it because people say i doctored my pictures i said fine come see the real deal you know right. the real deal is here you can't you can't you know put a filter on this face <laughs> so yeah. probably frankincense touch is uh my go-to deep blue rub frankincense touch peppermint beetlet also as well as peppermint and wild orange. So these are the more common ones that I like to lead, you know, with a solution for the day-to-day -day challenges that people may have. I love that. So I know you've, you are a master at blending oils and using traditional Chinese medicine and other modalities in, in your practice. Do you have a, like, if you picked two two oils that you love to blend together that maybe people would never think to put together, what what would you recommend? Something oh, unusual. Wow. Now, this is difficult, okay, because I have so many blends that I can share. So let right. me pull out my slides again. <laughs> Where did I put it? Ah, well, that's Academy. Okay, so I have, have this class, which is actually called the Feng Shui series. And then okay. within the Feng Shui series, you know, we talk about the five main areas of concern. So I just, allow me to just quickly run through so when yeah. people talk about feng shui, you know, sometimes they talk about relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, on its own, just rose touch. That takes care of it. Okay? And then next, health. Healing from head to toe. Sandalwood and vetiver. So this yeah. is a blend that works really well for me. It is very, very earthy and woody. But wow, it has worked some miracles for me. So and where do you put that? Just wherever you feel any aches and pain. So in a 10 ml roll-on bottle, three drops sandalwood, three drops vetiver, top up with FCO. Okay. You know? Now, the reason why I chose vetiver is because typically vetiver has been chosen, okay, as a replacement for a very pricey uh, aromatherapy product in Asia. Okay. In Asia, we use two kinds of incense. One of them is sandalwood incense. Okay, which doTERRA has sandalwood incense from both India and Hawaii. Right. Now, question. There is another name, okay, for sandalwood island. Have you heard of sandalwood island? Uh, in, in Hawaii? Yes. Sa Hawaii is known as sandalwood island. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay, so the ancient Chinese actually imported royal Hawaiian sandalwood from Hawaii for use in their day-to-day you usages. Wow, I didn't know that. So, which is why you know the uh Doterra got to thank the ancient Chinese for depopulating the royal sandalwood of Hawaii because probably commerce, you know, they chopped down most of it already. And that which is why you know when we went to uh the Doterra sandalwood plantation, we were we were took part in planting sandalwood. Planting you know? lots of sandalwood, yeah. That's right. You know, I we will I was blessed to be able to take part in that. Yeah, so sandalwood is a price in Asia. The other is, that is priced in Asia is agarwood. Okay. The best agar wood is actually from Vietnam, Indochina, okay. you know, and it is extremely pricey as well. A 3 ml bottle of pure agar wood 
can cost upwards of 2,000, 3,000 US dollars. Wow. It is that pricey. It is also known by another name among the Arab Arabs, O-U-D, wood. Okay. Yeah. So, vetiver has been known, okay, to be used as a replacement for agar wood. Okay. So, which is why, you know, um, doTERRA don't have their own agar wood. So, I replace it with vetiver. And just nice, vetiver is a root, you know, and sandalwood is uh, the core of the tree trunk. So right. healing from head to toe because the energy of vetiver is such that it is more grounding, you know, so the roots are like five, six feet long and it just penetrates deep underground. So vetiver has the energy of working on your toes. Whereas sandalwood is like, you know, it actually elevates your consciousness. The Chinese like to use it, you know, they burn, they, they actually burn the sandalwood powder, you know, for uh, meditation purposes. So healing from head to toe, sandalwood and vetiver. Okay. Love these. Love these mm. suggestions. Beautiful. Yep. There are five recipes. I give two here. Otherwise, okay. we will not Thank we will not be able to them. stop. <laughs> that's, Great. That's amazing. Yeah. So I know you have a an extensive repertoire of classes, and I know that you've shared oils all over the world. Can you name a trip or a destination or an experience that really was in your you know, now 13 years, over like, no, I guess 11 years with doTERRA. Um, mm. Like what stands out the most? What, what, what place? Well, uh, a lot of my knowledge is traced back towards meditation as well as yoga. And so for that, you know, the northern part of India, Nepal side uh, would probably be my spiritual home. Okay. So then um, before pandemic, I was blessed to be able to make a trip to Nepal and twice and then you know and if it was something really really fulfilling for me in the sense that I'm I get to see the culture which started 2000 years ago in terms of the health and wellness and it continued me and being able to go go back there to learn and to participate really really is beautiful so this year this year probably I just came back one week ago from Nepal and on a healing hands project Okay, so my own healing hands project. So let me show you some photos from that tree. It's actually on my Facebook in under Hong Leong Chua. So those of you who are my friend, you can probably go to Facebook to see. So yeah, so this um these are two some of the two of the ladies who is actually looking after the hostel. And then they have been, you know, using the essential oils at the hostel. And so I gave them some, some t-shirts and also we got some sponsorship of doTERRA oils and products. And I teach them how to use the oils and products. And then uh, post-pandemic, we've been supporting this place for the last two years. And then we take care of their rental and their, uh, um, accom basically the accommodation as well as their food and lodgings. Yes. Okay. So we have 26 students there. And then we five more to join us. So getting to 30, they feed us. This is probably their best meal, which is basically some vegetable rice and some coconut curry vegetable. That's about it. Yeah. Beautiful. And they were very, very keen to and eager to learn. So, so I felt that given that they are mostly teenagers, so you know, I, I called for a donation before the trip, and then we were gratefully supported by people who donated cleansers, scrub, terrazyme, PP assist, and essential oils. So probably a trip that is magical to me would be some, something that resonates with what we what helped us and being able to give back to the community, you know, and being able to also help them with the doTERRA essential oils and products. So with this, you know, I see uh, more of more, more of these trips happening. So already this year it was an exploratory trip where I brought two of my students from uh, KL. And then the in plan and intention is to make it more regular where we will host like sacred journey so that people can come experience the culture of Nepal. And then at the same time, you know, they can also have some cultural appreciation in terms of the uh, their religious beliefs and practices so we can visit a few sacred sites over there and at the same time 
cultural activities like understanding, you know, their painting culture, their sculpturing culture, and so on. So the plan maybe eight, nine days, you know. So we are we are we are putting that in motion. Hopefully next year, February, you know, uh, our first group of five jeeps can come along. So five person per jeep. So 25 people minus away five. Max, no, max, max, max. Maximum, okay. <laughs> but otherwise, it's, it's going to be too onerous trying to manage a, a big tour group. Yeah. So, I love that. Oh, that I would. So I want a spot on one of those in one of those jeeps someday. I think that would be just, you know, a dream come true. An absolute yeah. dream come true. That's so right. tell me about you personally and your personal use of oils and products from doTERRA right now. Like, what are your go-to must-haves? I use these every day. What products? Okay. Beyond a doubt, LLV. Every morning, I take the Lifelong Vitality Pack. Okay. When I need to lose some weight, I will take on the Metal Power. But otherwise, I'm not so consistent with Metal Power. Okay. Uh, Deep well, you Blue look Rub great, is, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Deep Blue Rub is definite. Oh, yes. You know, see all those uh, marks over here? I've been bothered by some sort of uh, dishydrated eczema. And, you know, oh. using essential oils in it seems to help a bit, but doesn't really stop. You know what worked really well? What? The mud mask. The mud mask? Yes. Okay. It's, it's so itchy and somehow it create a water vesicle. And therefore, you know, somehow the mud mask will be able to draw out the toxins from within the body and most importantly, stop the itching. Yeah. And great. the doTERRA do mud mask actually is toxic mud mask as well. So, you know, I've been using the mud mask for very good results. So that one is definite. Oh, yes, my best product right now because of Nepal. Okay, my first two trips to Nepal, uh, well, I totally enjoyed the trip. However, my intestine doesn't really enjoy the trip. Somehow, okay. I had two episodes of food poisoning. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Yep. So, thank thankfully, doTERRA launched a new product called PB Restore. Yeah. And when I read about the product uh, information, I was just so impressed by it. For the first time ever, a product of probiotic containing four phages. Yes. And when you have food poisoning, it's because of the bacteria, you know, yeah. that goes well, you know, in your system. So having the phages ready in a capsule, you know, to target all those bad bacteria is just wonderful. And oh. so this trip, I brought my PB Restore there. And every day, you know, I take one and I pass on to the participants, everyone to take one. No one suffer any food poisoning. So really? this is going that's to be a regular well, state. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. That's so amazing. when you're off to a third world country where perhaps the water may be suspect or perhaps hygiene standards may not be up to par, okay, you must bring along PB Restore. Yeah, I think anytime you travel out of your normal environment, your microbiome changes. And I think it's good. I think PB Restore, PB Assist Plus should go with everyone when they travel, no matter what. I don't care if you're going to, you know, somewhere 100 miles away. It's still a good yeah. idea. So for me, regular day-to-day -day maintenance is PB Assist Plus. Okay. And then when you need to call in the heavy guns, PB Restore. Restore. Okay. A, a bit like immunity support, you know, where on guard essential oil, on guard soft gel is like regular maintenance. Yeah. And when you need to call in the heavy guns, I'm too lazy, you know, to drip the essential oil capsule. Too much trouble for me. You just put on, pop on some DDR prime, done. Two DDR prime, two on guard soft gel, swallow it, and then it is done. Just drink lots of water. That's it. And you're ready to go. I love it. I love it. That's wonderful. So another thing I want you to think about, like all the people you've helped, just think for a moment, like just imagine the literally tens of thousands, right? Of people that you've touched, that you've helped. Maybe they tried the oils once. Maybe they've used them every day. Maybe they order them twice a year. It doesn't matter. You know, everyone has their own journey, their own interests. Do you have like one or two special memories of oh i'm so glad i was i was there i was able to share i was able to help the like, things that make you happy that you're doing this every day i think beyond a doubt i think the when my kids was growing up 
And because my daughter was born in Australia and somehow she has uh, adapted to the Australian climate. So when she started moving to Singapore, you know, I noticed that uh, her, her eczema start, starts to act up. Okay. Okay. So then for Jeannie, um, by the time she it was 2012, her eczema was the worst. Okay. And yeah. then uh, 2013, we joined doTERRA through the use of essential oils, through the use of some essential oils and supplements, especially, we were able to achieve an amazing turnaround. So I have to say, look at this. Okay. Wow. This photo was taken over Chinese New Year and she basically scratched her whole body raw from neck down. Her, her skin is a disaster zone. And this was actually like 50% healed already. So this is... 2012, as you can see here. Yeah. 2014, you can look at her. Wow. Totally amazing. new kid. That's amazing. Yep. Absolutely. So I guess that um, I appreciate modern science. I appreciate modern healthcare as well as uh, pharmacology. Uh, having said that, I would like to say that sometimes, you know, we have to look towards other tradition, especially of how we can balance our body holistically, our heart, our heart, mind, our body. And when a condition is chronic, requiring long-term medication, then we need to look into other aspects. Of course, you know, for uh, emergency medicine, definitely go towards the traditional healthcare. Yeah. However, Mm, my area of interest and passion is in supporting people, you know, in terms of their heart, their mind, their body. So essential oils plus, you know, ancient wisdom coming together and then we craft wellness solutions for people. Yeah, and Beautiful. looking at the way things are going ahead, okay, there's one school of feng shui that actually says that uh, every 20 year is a cycle, so this year, we just transitioned into the final 20 year of a nine year cycle. This cycle is actually 180 years. Oh, so okay. it's just a eight plus one. And each one unit of time is 20 years. So okay. the last set of cycle was actually, we are in the earth, the earth cycle. So over the last 20 years, what happened to property? Property went through the roof and property is now you know, on the verge of busting. I think if you're in New York, you, you look at the amount of empty office spaces, yeah. you know you, you know that sooner or later, the property market cannot hold itself. Yeah. And we have just transitioned in, away from the earth cycle into a new cycle of fire cycle. The new fire cycle actually says this. Because fire is like you can see, but you can't, you can't really see it. But it is real because when the fire burns, you can really see the fire burning and the smoke and the stuff like that. And uh, I'm sorry, you know, property and lives are lost when a fire reaches out of control. Right. But having said that, it is also like not there. You know, you can see through it sometimes. So virtual. So what, what one of the things they're saying is the virtual economy is going to even take greater root. So already last year, we see the advent of ChatGPT and then Sora came in and you just put in a text and wow, video graphics coming in already. You know, I got my son to experiment, you know, create a image of a panda, you know, holding bubble tea, walking, walking down New York Fifth Avenue. And it was almost able to do it. Not perfect, but almost. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like, wow. So. So we know that the virtual economy is coming and we need to prepare ourselves for it. But having said that, okay, another thing to highlight would be that because the world is now becoming more virtual, okay, there is a need for us to go back to our roots. Mm. Okay? You do your most of your interactions out there, but you realize that it is, for some, it may feel a bit empty. Yeah. So the next 20 years is, is actually a return to health and wellness. So for the next 20 years, you know, what are the industry that will flourish? Okay. Anything that is virtual. Okay. okay. So maybe CBDC may come, God forbid. But you know what? I think they're going to shove CBDC down the USA throat. Okay. CBDC because it's virtual currency. Okay. Right. Virtual commerce. And then on, on, the, on, the, on the flip side, okay, we will have more people, you know, 
uh, even in some sort of virtual reality. Before we know it, who knows, we may have a glasses, you know, tap on, and then it could be like Ready Player One. Not sure if you watch the movie Ready Player One. No. Okay, go, go watch it. It could okay. be a, a, a revelation of the future, of how the future could be like, maybe what, 10 years from now. The okay. moment one company invent a device that merges alternate reality and augmented reality into this what we call mixed reality okay you can buy online okay and have it delivered at home or you buy at home and then have it delivered in the real world so imagine you're walking down a virtual mall okay online and then you go into a, this wellness store carries a potikari then okay i will okay look so you look at it and say ah okay something to help you feel so much better even though you are experiencing some sort of emotional turmoil okay you pay for in-game currency but for real world deliver delivery and next thing you know you hear a drone to -to 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 deliver to your doorstep this wow. is the premise of what was mentioned in ready player one and the movie came out maybe five years ago but i can see that part of the world happening so be ready for it. But being ready for it, what, what will it mean? More and more people will feel disconnected from the world. More and more people will feel isolated and loneliness. The world will experience even more lo loneliness, even though we are so well connected. Yeah. So all the more, it is so much more important to build a community of like-minded souls so we can come in together to support each other. One of my passion these days, you know, as I travel is the storm is coming. You know, and we know the storm is coming. Previously, it's like, you know, we watched Game of Thrones and they say winter is coming. Well, we, when winter came, what happened? The pandemic hits. Yeah. You, you know, the storm is coming and we are, as we set up this doTERRA uh, wellness advocate teams, it is like a harbor, you know, so that the ships can come back, refill, repair, whatever. Then they go out to the stormy waves and come back in again. So, Every little, you know, a pocket of doTERRA community is like a harbor. And when, sorry, SHTF, okay, whether it is geopolitics, whether it is, say, economic and so on, wow, this will become a lifeline for many, many people. Mm, yeah, so which is why, you know, now I derive a lot of energy going forward, serving the community, helping them set up, you know, small communities to support those around them, whether is it physical challenges or even something as simple as loss of sleep, immunity, you know, respiratory and so on, or yeah. something a bit more subtle, stress management, emotional support, or even something even deeper, you know, in terms of understanding our mindset. Okay, so I conduct these kind of workshops to those who feel connected with me and then, you know, raise the funds to support the Nepal project. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We really do need to spend a longer time talking through all, all of these issues, but our time has run out for today. I, um, you leaving me with this feeling of like interconnectedness and, and so what, what oil speaks community to you? What's, what's the oil that we should all be grabbing onto to kind of draw mm. together vibrationally, okay, so... emotionally, spiritually. Good. Now, uh, Carrie, because you are a ling language teacher as well, so let's discuss the four directions. Now, in the Western culture, how do you call the four cardinal directions? You, if you oh. name the four cardinal oh, directions, north, south, you say, east, and west. Yeah. Yes, north, south, north, east, south east, west. and west. Now, if you are teaching in Chinese, how will you name the four ca cardinal directions? Oh my gosh. Um... The opposite, right? It's um. It's a circular. It's actually Tong Nan Si Bay. Tong Nan Si Bay, yeah. Okay, so it's actually east, south, west, north. Right. right. So it's interesting that the Western culture chose to name the cardinal directions, okay, as straight lines. Yeah. Okay. Whereas the Oriental tradition, they name it in a circular in form. A circle. Yes. So it describes about the outlook of two different cultures. Yeah. Okay, so east, south, west, north is circular. So circular means to say more encompassing. Okay, whereas um the Western culture is better at direction. Yeah. Okay, so I have this blend that says in connecting the four directions together. Okay. 
So this is actually based on the Chinese feng shui also. All right. So the based on traditional Chinese medicine, the direction is south, west, north. So based on China geography, they say that the east side is green color. Okay. okay. Which oil in doTERRA has the word green in it? Green Mandarin. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. South. Okay. The south of China is a more warm region. So it's associated with heat, with the fire, with fire and the color red. So a flower that is pretty much red in color and quite economical, geranium. Geranium. Yeah. Then the west, okay, is uh, metal and, you know, previous and the color white. Previously, we had a essential oil, okay, that had the name white in it. From white doTERRA. Fur, yeah. Awesome. White fur. white fur then becomes Siberian fur. Siberian okay? fur. And it is interesting that, you know, in terms of Chinese uh, celestial creatures, the direction west is associated with this uh, mythical animal called the white tiger. Oh. Okay, Bai Hu, white tiger. Oh. And white tiger is linked to Siberian tiger. Anyway, it's white and Siberian, never mind. Yeah. Then finally, <laughs> the north direction, okay, I just chose Kopaiba. Okay, so the four oils to use, okay, in the diffuser, one drop each, green mandarin, geranium, okay, Siberian fur, and Kopaiba. Dong Nan Si Bei. Dong Nan Si Bei, I love it. Oh, it's just, yeah. That's great. All right. So, so much to learn from you. And I I always learn from our conversations. We're going to end it with a fun little close. What you're going to do is you're going to give me one word or a phrase. Don't explain it. You're just going to answer it. And we're going to move on to every question. You ready? Okay. All right. Okay. One word or phrase, no explanation. Here we go. And then at the, I, I will say thank you right now because at the end, I want the audience to hear your last word and allow that to resonate with them. Okay. Mm. Okay. So thank you so much. This has been wonderful. It's such a beautiful memory for me. I can't wait to watch it again. All right. What is your favorite smell? Doesn't have to be an oil. Freshly baked bread. What is your, what's the smell you hate? Garbage. Garbage. Sewer, sewer, yeah. What Total bring, food. <laughs> what brings you the greatest sense of peace? Uh, being able to have me time, me time, meditation, meditation and prayer time, yes. What irritates you the most? Mm, let me see, heavy metal. <laughs> What's your favorite character trait in a human being? Mm, that which uplift others and bring light, you know, when all is darkness. What's your favorite guilty pleasure? <laughs> Iramisu. <laughs> What's the what's the last food you want to eat before you die? Hmm, now that's too difficult. Too many. I can't <laughs> can't answer. If you had a magic wand and you could get rid of any disease or illness, which would be the first one you would eradicate? Mindset. A, a negative mindset. Being okay. able to switch the mindset to say that this is possible. When you see possibility, many possibilities exist. I love that. Um, what one word would you like to leave us with today? I can't give you a, a word, okay? But I'll give you a phrase, okay? Be the change that you want the world 